Two years ago, I started this channel. I had zero camera presence and no editing or filming skills. My goal was simple, to share my love of cooking. In that first year, I made 50 videos, amassed a whopping 38,000 views, and 886 of you decided I was worthy of a follow, but don't worry, I probably wouldn't have followed myself either. Doing what any rational person in my position would, I quit my well-paying job, decided to abandon my grad school applications, and after seven years on my own, I decided to move back in with my parents. The plan was simple. I wanted to give myself at least two years to pursue making food content online as a full-time job. In the next year, I made 114 more videos. 12 were dedicated to a Taco Tuesday series. In another, I figured out how to make a pretty perfect smash burger, and I even tried my hand at comic cooking relief, though that's probably not my best genre. And I did my own take on a Mark Wiens street food tour in Mexico City. In this year, I learned a lot. Many times I did think about giving up, but there were so many more times where I found myself enjoying the process of making these videos. The research, learning how to film, learning how to edit, and most importantly, getting better at cooking. Even though the views may have not matched, I saw myself improving each video, and that's what kept me going. After one out of two years, I decided to make the move with one of my friends to the West Coast. The plan was simple, pick up a part-time job and use my remaining savings to cover basic living expenses while still pursuing this dream. Then literally overnight, okay, it was like two weeks, we went from 20,000 to 100,000 subscribers, one year and two weeks after quitting my job. We did it. And I do mean we because without all of you, this dream wouldn't be possible. So thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Ethan, a home cooking nerd who likes to find better ways to cook and share them with all of you. So this is the Q&A video, so we get to learn a little bit more about each other. Um, I'm going to answer a bunch of questions about my background, weight loss, some cooking tips, cooking tools, and things of that nature. And I'll have everything timestamped down below, so feel free to jump around as much as you want because some things are going to take a little bit longer to explain, some things will be a little quicker, so feel free to find what interests you. And thank you again for 100,000. It's Hard to put it in words. I don't know if I was quite expecting to, like us to go from 20K to 100K in two weeks. And now I think as I'm filming, I'm at like 115. And it really is thanks to all of you who have watched, shared, commented, and everything. So I truly, truly do appreciate it. But let's hop right into this Q&A. First question is, what is your background? So my background is a little roundabout to how I got here as a 26-year-old standing in front of you know, 100,000 of you. So I think the best way to do that is to just give you a quick little timeline of how I got to this point. So starting in high school, right after I graduated high school, I went to the University of Pittsburgh as a business school student. Then after that first year, I decided I wanna go someplace warmer and do something with golf. So I had one of my best friends, um, who's actually my current roommate now, who he was down there and I was like, all right, I'm gonna transfer down. So I joined the PGM program, Professional Golf Management, which is basically you just learn the business side of golf things, like how to run a golf course and things of that nature. Within that major, I had to take some business courses. So I took an accounting course and within that accounting course, I ended up signing up for this tax accounting competition. I know it sounds really lame, um, but it was sponsored by Deloitte, which is one of the big four accounting firms in the world. And we ended up winning our little regional competition and we got to go to the national competition in Westlake, Texas, where they have their headquarters. And, you know, being an impressionable 20 year old at the time, my you know, advisor said, hey, you should think about doing accounting too, maybe do a double major. It seems like a good career path. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it sounds cool. I enjoyed it. So I actually, I didn't do the double major. I just got rid of PGM and just did accounting because it would have added like an extra semester or two and I just didn't feel like doing, adding more schooling than I had to. So at the end of those four years, I graduated my bachelor's with an accounting degree, a concentration in information systems and a minor in data analytics. And then instead of going to get my CPA, I didn't want to do core accounting, but I did, so Deloitte and these big four accounting firms, they also have consulting sides. So I joined Deloitte Advisory right out of uh, college as an analytics consultant. And basically what my work looked like was you go on these projects with clients. They're usually out of some pretty cool city. So like New York or Chicago or Detroit or, or some, some pretty cool cities, to be honest. And 
you work on these projects, say it's a month or maybe it's four months, maybe it's eight months, and you basically travel there and you're on client site Monday through Thursday. So you fly out really early Monday morning, um, you work and stay at a hotel all the week, and then you fly back on Thursday nights and then work from home on Fridays. So I did that for just under three years. And then within the last year of that is actually when I started the YouTube channel because it was something fun for me to do on weekends. I, I've always loved cooking and that was kind of my creative outlet on weekends because I couldn't do that during the week. So it kind of really amped me up when I, when I would get home on weekends. So within that same kind of time frame, I started to realize that I wasn't going to be able to do this consulting thing long term. I just, the travel, it was fun in the beginning, but it kind of wore on me. It just like, you're, I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time, and it just feels like you're not really, you don't really have a home base because you're literally somewhere else more than half the time. So I was starting to go apply to grad schools, starting to look maybe at different jobs, and the YouTube channel, I mean, it had no growth at the time. Um, but I started to think, I was watching people like Peter McKinnon and, and Matt Diavella and um, like Jeff Nippert and, and some of these other creators, and I was thinking, you know, could I, could I become that, but in like the food space? Like, is that, is that possible? And instead of going to grad school, I, those kind of thoughts just kept running through my head. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna use the money I have saved up and you know, give myself at least two years to see what happens. Because um, not many times do you get in a position where you can invest in yourself and try to learn for yourself and just see what happens. Um, you know, I didn't have, you know, I'm not in a serious relationship or anything, so I don't have a family, I don't have you know, people to worry about, I just need to worry about what I wanna do. So I was in a lucky situation where I was able to do that. So I told my, you know, I told Deloitte that I was leaving them, um, and then I told, initially I was just gonna stay in Charlotte or move back to Raleigh and just use my savings. But then I was kinda talking with my parents and I was like, hey, would you guys mind if I move back home? Um, and they were totally on board, totally supportive of it. Um, and my youngest brother, Gabe, he was gonna be a senior in high school. So, you know, the last time we lived together, he was like 10. So that was pretty cool. So it ended up really working out. And ever since I quit in June, I think it was June 15th, 2019. So literally like a year and a month ago, um, moved back home. And then within that year, obviously made a bunch of videos. I'm sure you guys have seen some of them. Went on a really cool trip to Mexico City this winter, um, solo for five weeks. And that's just kind of led up to now when like I said, I was planning to move out here. Um, so my roommate, um, he, he was coming out. I was like, hey, if you want to join me on the move out west, feel free. And I was like, you know what, let's just do it. Um, was planning to pick up a part-time job and stuff. Um, was literally like looking at, at all these options. And, uh, and the explosion literally happened, you know, in two weeks. And, um, you know, it's in a place right now. If this keeps up, uh, we can do this full time. And I'm not... Like I couldn't be more excited for the future. It's, it's truly kind of ridiculous to think about it, um, how quickly things just change in the blink of an eye. And it, it really is all thanks to you. So that's kind of my background, my story of how I got here. And we're gonna hop into the next part, which is specifically cooking. And that is what is your cooking background? So for my cooking background, I'm a 100% self-taught home cook. Um, it's all books. It's YouTube videos, it's all, it's all online, that's, that's all it is. You know, I've never been formally trained in any sort. I've never worked in a restaurant of any kind, like not even fast food, you know, as like a, you know, a job in high school. Literally, never worked in food at all. It's just something that my family, um, growing up, we always had home cooked dinners. Both my mom and dad cooked. Um, my dad had a garden. My gram uh, baked. So I remember growing up, I would, she made bellish, which I have a video of on the channel, and her, her bun recipe that she would make around holidays, or basically any time we visited, we would always ask for it because they were so good. Um, and then I remember asking because I wanted to make those things and eat them when you know we weren't visiting or, or she wasn't visiting us. So I remember when I was, I don't even know, probably 13 or 14, um, learning to bake buns with my grandma um, you know, and, and bringing the recipe card home. So you know, just naturally got into cooking that way. And, you know, all throughout college, cooked all my own meals. Cooking and the kitchen has always been just a spot where I can de-stress. And it really feels like it's kind of my creative outlet. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm like a creative person in like 
arts. I never really liked painting or, or things like that. So cooking for me is, is kind of my creative outlet. And then as far as the YouTube channel goes, um, really I was inspired by, um, initially was Brothers Green Eats, um, which are now Pro Home Cooks. And they ran this competition, you know, probably two and a half years ago, where they were like, sub like fan submitted videos for, to basically become like an honorary like brother on the channel. Um, and my video got listed as an honorable mention. So I made like a 25 minute from scratch pizza, just like filmed it with my iPhone. Um, and that kind of like initially started that little bug, but then I didn't actually start the channel. You know, nothing really happened from that until probably five or six months later um, with that macro friendly Monday first episode, which is oddly similar to the low cal series that I'm doing today, obviously just much, much less polished. And another funny thing is the Recipes Remastered series is also very similar to some videos I made like a year and a half ago where I would compare recipes from people like Babish um, and Maddie Matheson or Gordon Ramsay and Varen Inamdar um, and compare the recipes, make them both. So it's kind of funny that the, the current series that I'm working on are very similar to things that I did like a year and a half to two years ago, but obviously just much better filmed, much more polished and things of that nature which is kind of a good segue into the next question, which is what is your filming and editing background? So again, I'm a 100% self-taught, you know, filmmaker, editor, whatever you want to call me. Um, I didn't know anything when I was starting out, like literally zero. I filmed on an iPhone for probably my first like 20 to 30 videos. And then I picked up a camera, but I didn't know what exposure was. I didn't know what ISO was. I didn't know, I, I stayed away from manual focus for a very long time. Um, so yeah, but basically how I started learning was, again, it was YouTube. I took some Skillshare courses on filming and, and cinematography and how cameras work, which really opened my eyes um, as I started to look at creators. So like when you see people like Benji with Babish or Matt Diavella or Jeff Nippard or Peter McKinnon, they're all very intentioned with what is being shown on screen. And after kind of taking those Skillshare classes, it really helped me kind of look at what they're doing in a new light. And obviously I've adopted um, some of their stylistic things into my current filmmaking, um, which is a really great way to kind of develop um, your own style. I mean, you'll see definitely a lot of comparisons um, between my style and, and other people's, um, but that's kind of the natural progression of how things seem to go in like these creative patterns. You'll pick up one thing from a video here, you'll pick up another thing from a video here, and then you kind of conglomerate that into you know, what it becomes, which is what, you know, my filming and editing style comes today. And I mean, part of why it's so fun is because like cooking, it's something that you can see very instantly when you make improvements. Um, and there's constantly things that I see in my current videos where I'm like, oh, I could improve that a little bit, get a little bit he better here, um, change up the lighting here, change up the framing there. So it's this constant kind of improving and learning journey that I really love um, in really anything that I'm doing, but you know, with cooking and filming, it's been a lot of fun for me. So that's kind of how I learned um, all self-taught. And then the last little about me section is what is your weight loss story? So I've alluded to it on the channel before that I have gone through a pretty um, big weight loss myself, um, 240 pounds at my heaviest, um, down to around 160, which is around what I'm at right now. Like, I think I was at like 163 the other day when I weighed. Um, and it's been a long, journey of ups and downs. It's not been linear. It's literally probably started again. I'll probably give a quick timeline here. Probably my junior year of high school is a good place to start. That was the heaviest I ever remember being. Um, and that was 240 pounds. Um, and you know, being a big guy, you don't exactly step on the scale more than like once or twice a year. Um, so that's the biggest I ever remember seeing. And then after my junior year to my senior year, um, I happened to drop like 30 pounds and I wasn't because I was trying anything. Um, so I played sports throughout high school. I was like going, I guess I must've just been exercising more and then not increasing my caloric intake looking back. Um, but I wasn't like actively trying. And then after a uh, high school graduation, my brothers and I signed up for a Tough Mudder race, which is like a 10 mile race. So we wanted to get in good shape for that. I set up just the training plan for running and lifting. Again, wasn't worried about nutrition and then ended up dropping down to like 185, um, you know, got in pretty good shape, but I wasn't really know what I was doing. I was just working out more. That's, that's it. I wasn't, I wasn't worried about like food or, or whatever. Um, and then throughout the next 
three to four years or probably three years of college. It was between like 185 and 200, you know, would get in better shape uh, in spring semester for spring break and then would kind of just do whatever the rest of the year was what always seemed to happen. And then once I started working, um, you know, more sedentary, traveling a lot, working a lot. So I wasn't prioritizing the gym and, you know, started gaining more weight. So I remember going up to, I remember seeing 205, which is a number that I hadn't seen in a while. And then when I started to get more serious about what actually do you need to do weight loss and fitness? And a lot of it really, it really just comes down to calories in, calories out. That's, uh, that's the big thing. Um, so for me, when I was working, because I was eating out, you know, four days a week, every meal, like Monday through Thursday, I'm eating out every single meal. Naturally, you're gonna have some higher calorie foods. You know, restaurants, they just want it to taste good. They don't care if they put in, you know, six tablespoons of butter into like one pasta dish, like they don't care. As long as it tastes good, that's what you're after. So I started to incorporate some things um, to kind of lower my caloric intake. So I would generally skip breakfast. And then I, if I knew we were going to a nice restaurant, I would just have a smaller lunch and then have a bigger dinner because I don't want to restrict myself from having a good time out at dinner. I'll just have a, you know, kind of a chill lunch, something much smaller. Um, and then, so I ended up getting down to 170 by taking my calories and macros pretty seriously. Um, that was the first time I'd ever been below 180. And then last summer, um, my brother Gabe and I worked out and we did like a, a cut where again, um, you know, working out like six times a week um, for like 40 minutes a day and, you know, tracking calories and nutrition got down to like 157, got in really, really good shape. And then for the past year, I haven't been tracking anything. Um, but I did do a seven minute half marathon at pace per mile this winter. So that was kind of the last like big kind of fitnessy thing that I did. And then hopefully once kind of gyms open back up, um, I'm planning to do another cut and then another like bulking session. Um, but that's kind of my, you know, weight loss story. So like I said, it's taken a long time. It was slow, sustainable habits over a long time. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like I dropped 80 pounds in a year. Um, it was that slow kind of, down to where we are because you know without your health we really are nothing so it's something that um you know it's, it's always going to be a big part of my life no matter what i'm doing but that's kind of my my fitness and, and health loss weight loss story the next question is what are some of your weight loss tips so number one would be to read understanding healthy eating it's a science-based book no bs straightforward it's like 90 pages it's well worth the read and it gives you a great foundation understanding of healthy eating because at the crooks for weight loss specifically, it's really calories in versus calories out. And then within that, there are some other important things, but that's the big one. That is the big one by far um, for, for general health and weight loss. Once you know that, you just really need to find what works for you within that kind of framework. You know, there's a bunch of different diets and, and exercise routines, but they're all really just in that same thing. They're just different ways of doing, you know, caloric intake and, and muscle building. That being said, I will tell you what works for me. So my maintenance calories are around 1900 calories a day. So I focus on that and my just getting sufficient protein, um, but not crazy protein, maybe like 80 to 90 grams of protein a day um, is plenty for me. I'm not trying to be some strong man or a, a bodybuilder. I just want to be in general good athletic shape. So that's what works for me. Um, like I said, I don't specifically track in like an app anymore. Um, I just kind of throw something on a scale and I'll be like, all right, my chicken is six ounces. This pasta is like two servings of pasta. Um, and then I've got just some red sauce. So that's maybe 700 calories um, in this meal. And then I'm like, all right, so I've got probably 1200 calories for the rest of the day. That's just what works for me. And then I'll just hop on the scale like maybe every other day just to see if I'm loosely, you know, if I'm around the same weight, then obviously like everything's cool. Um, so that's what kind of what works for me. As far as meals, um, I just do two meals a day, two main meals. So I do lunch and a dinner. And if that sounds like intermittent fasting, it kind of is. I just don't actually stick to the strict timeline. I don't, again, I don't really care if I eat lunch at 10 AM and then eat dinner at 10 PM. I don't, I don't really care. Um, it's just really about the total, the total in the day for me. As far as fitness goes, I try to do something every day. I've found that that works much better than me than maybe three hour and a half sessions throughout the week. I used to do that, but now I just try to do something every day for like 30 to 40 minutes. Um, so last summer I was doing weights six times a week, but it was only like 30, 
40 minutes um, each time. So it just becomes an easy habit. It's like your day doesn't feel complete if you haven't moved your body, which is a, a nice sustainable approach for me. But those are kind of my big things. Um, read that book, find what works for you, make sustainable changes that you actually enjoy doing and you're gonna stick with them for the long term. Those are kind of my big ones. So that was very long winded. Let's hop into the next set of questions which are gonna be all cooking related. The first one is what are some tips you would give your younger cooking self? So number one would be to learn to salt by taste. Learn how salt affects your food. Learn what things taste like when they're over salted. Learn what they taste like when they're under salted. And you can do little experiments by, you know, changing up how much salt you're using in pasta water. Try sprinkling salt on watermelon or tomato and then let it sit, see what it tastes like. You could do that brining experiment um, like we did in the grilled chicken video. But learning by salt by taste is the number one skill of any cook or chef, um, and I will, that is a hill that I will die on. I think it is by far the most important um, to making better food. Number two would be to get, get a sharp knife, use a sharp knife always, and learn how to sharpen that knife so you can keep it sharp. Um, sharp knives are safer, they're more enjoyable to cook. Um, I love chopping up vegetables. It's fun when things are sharp and you're just gliding through. And also, the only injury that I've ever had, like only bad injury, you know, burnt myself and stuff like that, is because I was using a dull knife on a carrot and it rolled and I got a nasty cut on the tip of my finger. Um, you guys can see the photo in my beginner's guide to knife sharpening video if you want. But that would be, the second one is use a sharp knife and know how to keep it sharp. Number three would be to understand kind of the basic like food science um, reactions and principles that go on in food. So there's a good little passage in this book, The Professional Chef, what they use at the uh, Culinary Institute of America. Where they talk about things like the uh, Maillard or Browning reaction, caramelization, gelatization, emulsification, and, and things of that nature. And those are basic things that happen in all recipes. Um, it doesn't matter what cuisine it is. So kind of understanding what you're trying to do, like if you're trying to get nice browning on a steak, or if you don't want nice browning, you know, if you're, maybe you're braising something and you're trying to break down the, um, you know, and gelatinize the beef so it falls apart and is tender. But understanding those basic things I think is very important. And I'm hoping to do a video on that um, within the, you know, the next month or two, hopefully. Then number four would be to clean as you go. And I have a small video on this I did a number of months ago, but cleaning as you go is an absolutely critical skill. And it's a, it's more than just a skill. It's also a mindset um, to have everything clean when you're, you're starting cooking. So like when I come into this kitchen, it's everything's clear. Everything's off the counters. There's no dishes from when I cooked the last time. It's all starting fresh each time. And for me, not only does it make it more efficient, it also just makes it more enjoyable to cook. When you're coming into a kitchen and you don't have a bunch of stuff strewn about on the counter, you don't have a bunch of stuff in the sink, it just makes a more enjoyable cooking environment. So clean as you go and always start with a clean kitchen. And then the last one would be to embrace the mistakes and enjoy the process of starting to make better food. You're not gonna do anything good the first couple times you do it, um, but cooking is one of those things that once you kind of start to understand these things, you can make leaps and bounds in how good your cooking is, um, which is, I think, what's really cool about it. But when you mess up something or it doesn't look pretty or, or things of that nature, don't worry about it. Like, just focus on what you wanna improve for the next time and focus on making food taste good before you try to make it pretty. I know like on Instagram and Pinterest and stuff, there's a bunch of gorgeous food photos, but I mean, sometimes like I'll look at like a, a recipe on Pinterest and I'm like, this recipe, I could make it look pretty, but I can tell it's not gonna taste good and it's not gonna be texturally good based on the cooking methods and techniques, but it looks good. So everyone thinks it's good, but it's actually not. So I would focus on making food taste good, focus on the texture and, and developing those skills. Then you can worry about, you know, trying to make things look pretty. I mean, even my, like my food doesn't look super pretty or anything. Um, I try to make it look pretty, but again, I'm more focused on the flavor, the texture. And I think if you focus on those things too, it will help you a lot in your cooking journey. Next up, what are some of your must have cookbooks for people who are learning to cook? And so I don't actually have probably the top two. I have them on my Kindle um, and my computer because I, I usually search these and use them for research. But that'd be Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat and The Food Lab. Those are kind of my top two, I would say. Um, then my third one would probably be Ruhlman's 20, 
which is 20 techniques and 100 recipes. And the, the main theme with all these books is they don't just give you recipes, but they actually teach you what's going on or how to cook or what the techniques are. So those are kind of my three big ones. And then these are kind of some of my honorable mentions. So Work Clean, this isn't really a cookbook. Um, it's actually, it's called The Life-Changing Power of Mise en Place to Organize Your Life, Work, and Mind. So this is not a cooking specific book, but it's just, it teaches you about chefs and mise en place, um, but more importantly, like how to use that in your everyday life. So really good book in my opinion. Um, On Food and Cooking by Harold McGee. This is kind of like the OG, like food science home cooking book. Um, Kenji references this one a lot in his book, The Food Lab. Um, but it's not, there's not really any recipes in here. There's, a, there's just a lot of information in there. So that's a decent one. An Edge in the Kitchen, this is all about sharpening knives, all the different ways to sharpen knives. So since sharpening knives and sharp knives are an important thing, I think this is a good book. I'll usually reference that every once in a while. Um, Meathead, The Science of Great Barbecue and Grilling. This is by Meathead Goldwyn. And it's kind of like a food lab-ish book, but specifically about um, barbecue and grilling. So another great kind of science-based resource. And then the last one is The Professional Chef by the Culinary Institute of America. So this is basically like the textbook that they use. Um, so there's a bunch of recipes, but they also just talk about general methods, grinding stuff, how to cut different cuts, what like, what different flours there are, what different spices there are. There's so much information in this thing. And I'll use this as kind of a base reference point um, when I'm starting research, like if I wanna look up a recipe, um, usually there's a recipe for every cuisine in here. It's kind of nuts. Again, I'll leave links to all this stuff. You guys wanna check them out, feel free to do so. But yeah, those are kind of my top cookbooks. Next up, what are some of your essential cooking tools? So a very easy one, the first thing would be a chef's knife, which we just talked about, but something eight inches or like 210 millimeters can be a Japanese style one like this one, can be a more French style that's got the belly, it just depends on what kind of shape you like. But this is the one knife that everyone should have in their kitchen. You, it's like the single knife that you use for probably 90% of things. You know, you can start adding parry knives and, and other knives and things like that, um, but you don't necessarily need them. So an eight inch chef knife that is sharp um, is essential and then a way to sharpen that knife. So for me, I love using whetstones. Um, there are some other ways to do that, but I think whetstones are the best. This is just a thousand grit whetstone. There's also 1,000, 6,000 grit whetstones. And I'll have some links to this stuff if you guys wanna check it out, everything that I mentioned in this video. Then number, the next one would be a salt um, container of some sort. And it doesn't have to be something fancy like this. This is like some, it's like a salt pig made by some company in, in France. You don't need to get this. I will link it if you do want to check it out. You can just get a little container. It can just be a bowl, but something accessible that you can quickly, you know, use your hands and, and, and really, you know, using your hands and understanding and the feeling of how much salt you're adding is a very important skill um, to use as we talked about. Then the next one would be probably a thermometer. So like we talked about in the grilled chicken video, the only way to know if your food is you know, done or safe or cooked to the temperature that you want it to be cooked is to use a thermometer. It's an absolutely critical piece of equipment for so many things just outside of meat as well. Um, I use this to check the temperature of my oil. It makes deep frying safer. It makes cooking um, meat to the right temperature safer. It makes um, bread making so much easier. If you actually test the temperature of your water and the, dough, and the temperature of the dough of your bread and treat it like an ingredient is the temperature of the dough. It makes a huge difference. Um, I'll also, if I'm making tea and just, you know, boiling something, I'll like throw it in um, and be like, all right, like one, 160, I can drink that without burning my tongue or 155, I think I do. And then last is a scale. So critical for baking. I, I'm of the notion that you have to use a scale for baking. I mean, you don't have to, you can still bake stuff without using a scale, but it makes it easier. It's more accurate, especially when you're sharing recipes for the, the low-cal series to calculate everything. I mean, I don't know how much a cup of chicken is. Like, is it cubes? Is it, is it big chunks of chicken? Like, what's a cup? So using weight is by far more accurate for calories. So an absolutely invaluable tool. But those are kind of my essential cooking tools that kind of enhance and, and make your cooking better. Um, obviously there's pots and pans and things, but I may do a separate video on that. I don't wanna go into that into this one.
Let's talk future of the channel. So someone asked, are you planning on doing other series, like kind of the kitchen etiquette, like the spices ones or beginner series? So yes, I am absolutely planning on doing some more of those. I've got a kind of kitchen tour, tour and organization video planned, hopefully in the next like week to two weeks. Um, so hopefully that will kind of be in that line of series. And then I've got a bunch of other ideas as well. I've got a whole list of stuff that I'll never get to at all. But, um, but if you have any specific videos you wanna see, just drop them below. Um, I'm always open for recommendations. And then next, someone asked, do you wanna do any collabs with anybody? So yeah, I'm open for collabs um, with a lot of, like really with anyone. Um, you know, I'd love to do something with like, you know, Kenji Lopez Alt, or, you know, maybe Benji with Babish, or, you know, there's a bunch of people that I would, I would gladly do a collab with. Um, I know they can be a little bit hard to organize and things like that, but, um, but yeah, I'm open to collab. So if you want to drop some messages to your favorite creators, maybe we can get something in the works. And then along that lines, what are some of your other favorite cooking YouTubers? So I don't actually watch a ton of other cooking YouTubers, but when I want to learn something, generally I'll go to um, Dan, What's Eating Dan, Dan Souza from America's Test Kitchen, or Kenji Lopez Alt and his channel. Um, if I want something kind of more on the entertainment side, I'll go to Maddie Matheson or Benji with Babish. And if I kind of want like a mix of those two, Internet Shaquille, uh, he's got like those tight little like four to five minute videos where they're entertaining, but you also learn something. Um, so those are kind of like, I, I guess the top ones, but then I'll also watch people like Josh Weissman, um, Adam Ragusea, um, Not Another Cooking Show, Pro Home Cooks. It just depends on if I you know, see a, an interesting video, I'll click on it or see, see what people are posting about. So, I, but yeah, from time to time, I'll, I'll watch just about anyone. Who are some of your inspirations? So specifically within kind of the cooking um, area, Alton Brown, he was kind of like the forefront of, you know, with his Good Eat series of like this kind of home cooking, how to, how to make home cooking better and understanding what's going on. So he's a huge inspiration for me. Um, and then you guys, you know, as know, I cite and source um, Kenji all the time. So Kenji Lopez Alt is another, uh, a big inspiration for me. Outside of that and kind of the YouTube space, people that I have kind of, you know, looked at, um, Jeff Nippard, um, he makes, you know, fitness style videos, but I kind of like his approach, which I kind of incorporated into mine, just it's cooking. Um, Babish is a big inspiration for me. Um, Peter McKinnon, um, Matt Diavella, um, those are kind of my, you know, youtube -y kind of inspirations, I guess, if you would say so. To wrap this up, we'll walk through some just miscellaneous questions that people ask. Number one is what is your go-to meal? For me, that is just a smash burger. It's easy, I can make it high calorie, I can make it low calorie. Meals that I can eat a, a bunch of times and not get tired of it, and they're super easily customizable for whatever you have in the fridge. You can make them you know, Italian-inspired, Mexican-inspired, um, Indian-inspired, Mediterranean. So smash burger for me is my absolute go-to meal. Next, someone asked what my mustache routine was. Um, I literally just comb it down in the morning. I don't use products or anything. Um, one day I had like a little beard and I was like, all right, I'm just gonna shave this and see what it looks like. So I shaved down, I just leave the scruff. I don't, I don't mess around with clean shaving. And yeah, that's it. So I've just been rocking the mustache for maybe like six months and I don't know, I, I, kinda, I kinda dig it. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep it around. What camera equipment do I use? So I use the Sony a6400 for those side shots. Um, and, and with a zoom lens, 18 to 105. And then on my main camera, I have the Sony a6600. So for shots like this, I'll be using the Sig Sigma 16 millimeter for that wide angle. But then when you actually see me like doing the cooking, it's primarily down here. So I have a 30 millimeter lens that I'll do for that. But that's the only camera equipment I use. It's good for me, it works. I'll probably be using this stuff for a good while yet before I get new stuff. Then lastly, what do you like to do outside of cooking and making videos? So that definitely does take the bulk majority of my time. But outside of that, obviously I like working out. Um, I like to play Ultimate Frisbee. Um, I've been playing some Warzone, you know, FPS shooter. For those who don't know, though, I'm sure a lot of you do know what it is. I like to read a good bit of fiction books, um, like fantasy, so like Game of Thrones, the Mistborn trilogy, the Stormlight Archive, those are by Brandon Sanderson, The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. I'm on the, I think it's called the Lightbinder series right now by Brent Weeks, just started, it's pretty good. So I do, I do read a good bit of fiction. And then I have been getting back into golf again after many years of playing like four rounds a year probably. Uh, I've been playing like weekly since I've moved out here. Um, the weather's so nice, I mean it's not, and it's one of the only things you can do socially distance. Um, so 
but getting back into that and trying to improve, which is really fun. And then other than that, you know, cooking, hanging out, and I strum a little bit of guitar here and there. Uh, another something that I want to actually improve at, I've kind of just been the same level for years, but that's kind of what I like to do outside of cooking. And that will wrap it up for this Q&A. Again, I hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos. Thank you again for 100,000. It's just, it's absolutely wild. Um, cooking for me is, it's great because cooking can be whatever you need it to be. If you need it to be something that helps you reach, you know, fitness goals, it can be that. If you need it to be a creative outlet, it can be that. If you need it to be something that when you come home, you know, after some beers and you wanna, you wanna make some stovetop mac and cheese to comfort you, it can be that. It can be for holidays, it can be for celebrations. And I think that for me is what I like cooking about the most because it can be whatever you need it to be. And for, in my life, it's been many different things. And now it is, now it's my job and I could not be more happy. And it's thanks to all of you. So I do appreciate it. That's gonna wrap it up for this one. We will be back on Wednesday with a regularly scheduled food video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.